The Great Exhibition ran from the 1st of May to the 15th of October 1851. To accompany our VR simulation of the exhibition, to be released free of charge in September 2024, we have created a five-part video series about the Great Exhibition of the Works of Industry of All Nations. The main entrance was roughly halfway along the south wall, slightly northeast of the Prince of Wales Gate. Nowadays the location is marked by this information board, seen here from the rear, with the Prince of Wales Gate in the background. Three magnificent elm trees were fully enclosed by the arched transept roof. One of these was in the entrance lobby at the south side of the building. The other two near the north end of the building, in the area devoted to the main refreshment court. Some smaller trees were enclosed in the building court in the northwest of the building. Smaller refreshment courts in the single-story section on the north side of the building, one at the western end, and one at the eastern end, had open sections through which more trees protruded. Either side of the entrance lobby were the ticket booths and turnstiles for day visitors, where a season ticket holders passed via desks in the centre. Once through ticket checks the visitor would pass through the huge doors and immediately be presented with this magnificent view of the transept. On the right side are works by British sculptors William Calder Marshall, Patrick McDowell, Henry Weeks, William Frederick Woodington. On the left side are works by John Graham Locke, Edward Hodges Bailey, Edward Bowring Stevens. Also here is one of the artworks owned by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. Victory by Christian Daniel Roque a copy of the work originally in the Stachlos in Berlin. This copy is now in Osborne House. In the virtual centre of the building is the Crystal Fountain, marking the point where the transept, running north-south, is crossed by the nave, running east-west. The allocation of space in the Great Exhibition was roughly divided into two halves. The western half was mainly devoted to the exhibits of the United Kingdom and colonies, the eastern half to foreign exhibits. However, there were caveats to this. Moving machinery, from the United Kingdom, France and the United States, was located in the northwest of the building, being closest to a boiler house located some 150 foot from that corner of the building. It housed five boilers, each producing 20 horsepower. The steam thus generated was fed by underground pipe to the main building. Stained glass of all nations was grouped on the northeast gallery wall. In the western nave of the building, large works of sculpture were exclusively British, whereas in the eastern nave the large number of foreign pieces were accompanied by a few British pieces. The nave was home to trophy displays, large pieces such as the model of Liverpool docks, various fountains, lighthouse lenses, the Ross telescope, the Colbrookdale dome, the dent clock, the magnificent sculpture of Eldon and Stoll, now at University College Oxford, the Canadian timber trophy. Horse and Dragon, now at Stratfield Say House, home of the Duke of Wellington, the Silk Trophy, portraits of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, the Koh i Noor diamond, in a birdcage like enclosure for security, the Prince of Wales shield, now at Windsor Castle, the Marquis of Butte, now at Callaghan Square, Cardiff, the Duke Croquet organ, Godfrey de Bouillon, a copy of the statue in the Royal Square in Brussels, Amazon and Tiger, a copy of the statue outside the Alters Museum in Berlin. Statues of George of Podobrady and Queen Libusa both now in the National Museum Prague, the Bavarian Lion now part of the Quadriga on Munich Siegester, the Greek slave and behind that a railway bridge, on which was a trophy of rubber products. Agricultural products were displayed in the southwest of the building. On the north side of the building was a room devoted to Sevres porcelain, Beauvais tapestry, and various French sculptures. France had by far the largest display area after the United Kingdom and its colonies, 240 foot wide, stretching between the north and south walls of the building. A small part of this facing the nave was given to Italy, although further space was given to France behind Spain and Portugal. In the northwest of the building were various moving machinery exhibits. This included cotton weaving machines and a printing press for the Illustrated London News. In the Indian section on the south side of the building was a howdah mounted on a stuffed elephant, although the elephant was, in fact, African, being the only one which could be located in England. The Indian section continued on the north side of the building where the ivory throne was displayed. The India section, being the jewel in Britain's colonial crown, was large, and continued along the whole of the west side of the transept. 
The northeast corner where the nave crosses the transept was allocated to Persia, with the Ottoman Empire surrounding it with displays facing the transept and nave. A similar arrangement on the south side placed China on the corner, with Tunis facing the transept and nave. The display from the province of Canada included a canoe suspended from the roof. There was a medieval court designed by Augustus Pugin, containing examples of Gothic architecture and furniture. The Sheffield steel manufacturers displayed all manner of metal goods, including fireplaces, tools, such as saws, scissors, and the Norfolk knife, now at the Cutlass Hall in Sheffield. Nearby were several exhibits of furniture, with some of the 24-foot square bays laid out as whole rooms, complete with ornamental plaster ceilings. Fabrics of all sorts occupied the western end of the nave, along with furs and animal skins. In addition to moving machinery, there was a large collection of static machinery. This includes the great hydraulic press which raised the box sections for the bridge over the Menai Strait. There was even a collection of locomotives. Outside were more exhibits, including anchors and railway gates, samples of raw materials, stonework in slabs and columns. A clay statue of Richard Coeur de Leon stood outside the western entrance, a bronze copy of which is now in Old Palace Yard, at the Palace of Westminster. The German exhibits, under the banner of Zollverein, or Customs Union, included some magnificent toys and models, including two impressive displays from Sonneberg, a village fair scene with Castle Rosenau, Prince Albert's birthplace, and Gulliver in Lilliput, which is now in the German Toy Museum in Sonneberg. There were, of course, many more display areas within the exhibition, such as those of Jersey and Guernsey, Salon and Malta, behind which was the fine art court. Switzerland had a display area between Tunis and France on the south side of the nave. Holland was located between Belgium and Austria on the north side of the nave. Russia had displays on both sides of the nave near the eastern end of the building, next to the United States. A number of smaller territories were grouped together, such as here just to the west of the main entrance, featuring the displays of a number of Caribbean islands plus New Zealand and Western Australia. The exhibition was huge. Queen Victoria is said to have visited 34 times, but even she would not have been able to visit all of it. So look out for our completely free VR simulation of the Great Exhibition which is due for release September 2024, which will allow you to explore the exhibition at your leisure. The first release of the simulation will not be complete, of course. Updates will continue to be released periodically as more exhibits are added. In the meantime, look out for the final video in this series, which will look at the legacy of the Great Exhibition.